I am um, Arsalan Al Hashimi. I basically was uh, born and raised here in the UAE, um, in Abu Dhabi. Um, I lived in the States and I lived in Europe, I lived around the world. I um, have always, always been very interested in human performance. And I basically have been kind of born and bred to be a high performer, to be honest, since I was a, since I was a kid. From education to sports to everything. Else. What does that mean? So I, I, the, the second place is never acceptable. And so this is what got me into what I'm doing now. Yeah. Was was, uh, was uh, adrenal fatigue, and I got diagnosed with it in stage three, which is like the, basically the end of and your what adrenal. Is adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is the is the is the total fatigue of your adrenals, which are adrenal glands, mm -hmm. and they basically get to the point where they stop um, at different levels, so stage one to stage three, they mm -hmm. decrease or they stop producing the hormones that they're responsible for producing. Okay. And they're crucial hormones for, um, for you as a human being. So mm -hmm. most of the fight or flight hormones are either um, the precursors from them come mm -hmm. from adrenals mm -hmm. or they are produced by the adrenals. So they're extremely important for 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 the regulation of your of your body into stress and out of stress and stuff like that. And they're yeah. affected. This is an, a, a chronic stress syndrome. Yeah. One of the. If I would want anything to be te taught in curriculums for kids growing up and stuff like that, is absolutely the understanding of what emotions are, because most people have a very unhealthy relationship with their emotions in the sense that they don't understand where they come from, they don't understand why they're there, they don't understand the usefulness of it. I got to the point where I started kind of understanding that your emotions, positive or negative, are there for you, to serve you. And the understanding of stress and chronic stress and how you're feeling and is a is a is a kind of a um, a resilience scale between joy and and chronic stress, right? Mm -hmm. These these are the kind of metrics I play with, mm -hmm. and that's why I talk a lot about joy because joy for me is the antidote of chronic stress. Yeah, I was just gonna ask right? that. Yeah, joy and freedom are the antidote of chronic stress. Whenever you're chronically stressed, mm -hmm. it means you're chronically in fight or flight, which basically mm -hmm. means that it is very hard for you to find joy in your life sustainable joy. You have these peaks of a lot of joy and a lot of depression and a lot of joy and a lot of depression, which is something that I went through, everybody goes through, especially high performance. For the reason you said, is because we think, we've always been taught that to perform highly, you need to be unhappy. Yeah. And most high performers that I speak to, if I tell them, do you believe in being happy all the time? They're like, no. But why? Like, why can't you be happy all the time? And then the third thing you said pertains to that, which is what is the root cause of your high performance? Yeah. Are you high performing because of me? Like when I was a child where I felt like I needed to prove myself, it's coming from all this negative yeah. conditioning, right? I'm not good enough. I'm not healthy enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not as strong as my friends. Yeah. They used to tease me because I was so skinny and scrawny, scr scrawny and yeah. I would always not end up first in all the sports and then all of a sudden I was the captain of all the sports mm. you know and I went to a very very demanding uh, sports school mm. and we won a lot of competitions all around the Middle East a so yeah so all of a sudden I felt like I was worth I was I belong I was you know all of these things I was respected because I wasn't getting that at home yeah. So what is the reason? What's, what's the root cause? Like, in the Ascension Method, the first step is called shift. Yeah. And basically, it is a very kind of intentional way to shift your focus mm. from effect to cause, mm. right? Which basically means to take you away from victimhood mm. into empowerment, mm. right? because I also believe that there can't be any healing unless you are empowered to do that for yourself.
right? Yeah. So the first thing we do is we start shifting people from from victimhood to, to empowerment, right? Yeah. And that requires different things for different people, but mainly it's more on the educational side than it is about um, doing the modalities or helping people heal yet. Because I'm not sure if you want me to get into this, but it's, it's basically a lot of the stuff that we need to heal later down the line in the Ascension Method is bringing the stuff from the unconscious to the conscious yeah right so this is the only way to transform you have to like see how you were to be able to transform it yeah absolutely you have to sit with yourself isn't that a lot of work no actually no it's i mean first of all if you if you think about the science of the mind mm -hmm. right the, you're 95 percent unconscious and you're five percent conscious which basically means Conscious can be, in this context, interchangeable with awareness. So yeah. you're 95% unaware of your behaviors, of your reactions, of everything you're doing. And you're 5% aware, right? Yeah. So most of the stuff that's happening in your life that's causing you chronic stress is in the 95%, right? You're unaware of them. So in order for you to really have a transformation, you need to be aware of these things, right? So it is bringing the unconscious to the conscious. Step number one is to, because people come to me and they're very chronically stressed, step number one is to make their unconscious and conscious friends again. They're, they're actually in complete disconnect yeah. because there's something in between, in between the unconscious mind and conscious mind called the critical faculty. If you can imagine, it's like a, it's like a wall, yeah. right? And whenever there is something extreme or stressful or whatever, that wall comes up so that you're not allowed to consciously think. Yeah. Think about that. If you're chronically stressed, your capability of making aware, conscious decisions and actions are extremely limited, right? Because in fight or flight, you are responding to extreme danger, right? So you are trying to, to escape, you're trying to fight, you're trying to do all these things. So you don't have access to, to real conscious aware of emotions and feelings and actions accordingly. I love that because um, uh, I'm here in Dubai, and that for me is a big chronic stress. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a big <laughs> challenge because uh, part of my chronic stress was that I, for the three years before, before getting my heart attack, is being between Dubai and, and Egypt and working like really hard within that spectrum, and Dubai is very stressful. Like it is the I can feel the energy. I, I can feel I can feel it like hitting me like that. So I was, I was obviously the past six days were like, okay, you're ground, like connecting the conscious with the unconscious. And it's like- That's why I sent me a message. How do you deal with how this? How do you do <laughs> this? Like, how do you do this? Because, <laughs> because Sorry, now- Sorry, I'm not hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, because for me, like the last time I came, it was before, pre all of this. And I feel like I kind of leveled up from a sensitivity level and from a, an awareness level. So now I'm even more aware. Mm. So as soon as I landed, I'm like, oh goodness, yeah. this is not for me. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's definitely not for everybody. Um, I, and I can tell you from the conversations I have are, insane. are, 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 are insane. But yeah. to be very honest with you, on the opposite side of it yeah. is that right now, there is no place like Dubai, nowhere in the world. Yeah. I've been I traveling all over Europe, I travel to the States and back, you know, we go to California every year because my wife lived there for like, God knows how many years, 14 years, so it's second home to her. And there's no place like Dubai right now. No We're at the so. forefront of everything, right? So if you are the kind of person, a high performer that wants to be in the thick of it, you need to be here. Yeah. And that's why I do what I do. I work with high performers to keep them at that peak performance while at the same time, not losing track of, of their of the important things in life. That's where the ten pillars of life mastery came yeah. from. Tell me about the silence, the silence in the silent retreats. Yeah, like talk so, to me about that part. So I uh, I mean anybody knows that any kind of connection and any kind of exchange of um, ideas between you, your higher self, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, yeah. um, requires silence. 
requires, you know, self-awareness, requires being in a centered position, requires all of these things that all meditators and mindfulness people and priests and sheikhs and everybody's been talking about, right? To have a conversation with God, you need to be somewhere alone, one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation. And I lost I felt like I lost that kind of because I'm very intuitive. One of the things that I work on, I worked on on myself and with my clients is to start harnessing your intuition. And as a high performer, stop trying to control things too much, right? To live in surrender and things like that, because it's a superpower. And when high performers are able to connect to that superpower, it's unbelievable the stuff they can achieve. I can relate to that. Right. So what I needed to do was that to reconnect mm -hmm. so and I've been feeling because of a lot of things that are going on in my life that are in a negative space I was I have been feeling very fatigued and very tired and brain foggy all the time and mm -hmm. whenever I feel like that before I used to panic like I used to go into f severe panic because of what happened to me and yeah. when I got sick um, but now I see everything as a sign everything as a communication yeah. and so when I started feeling like I'm physically struggling I uh, I went and got some blood tests I did the cortisol test I did all of that just to understand what's going on on a physical level and the vitals showed that I am fatigued a little bit um, and my adrenaline huh? so you kind of withdrew and yeah. you know that this is yeah. the the time to just take a step back yes. and yes. Connect to, to, to reassess yourself. really to connect and reassess so I did what I do on my clients I went I sat down I centered myself did a lot of breath work and meditation and stuff like that to open up stuff yeah. um, and then to drop the critical faculty basically and then I just wrote for approximately 48 hours non-stop okay. but when you're in stress or when you're in chronic stress now I call it correctly when you're in chronic stress, uh, there's a finality. There's like a, like a severe kind of like, if you don't do this, like catastrophe is gonna happen. Of course, yes. Right? And the beauty of what you're saying is, and no, and no, it's like, it's the waves of the ocean where I get into stress and then I could cross this line into chronic stress, but I'm aware. So I'll, I'll be able to flow back into the silence and yes. basically the balance between being and doing yes and this is this is beautiful because it's very for me it's very hopeful yeah because for the longest time i knew i was in recovery where i would i would just need to i would need to do nothing and sit with myself mm -hmm. because my body's not allowing me to do anything and and now being here and doing all the like going up for the Khalifa and and witnessing the fireworks was like insane i wouldn't ever think that my body would ever like allow me to you know and and doing them i feel that i feel like because i've recharged now i can do this and i'm gonna go back to my like you know sanctuary yeah. and charge again yeah so like this is very hopeful for me yes yes you know because we have control over that yeah we have control with like if this is stressing me out i'm going to choose to yeah like yes. withdraw myself yes and i mean all this work all this work any work on self any work on self improvement and performance or whatever is all about awareness yeah. it's i'm telling you it's all about bringing the unconscious into the conscious True. it's all about bringing you what you're unaware of into awareness True. because then you have choices and you have options and you have the ability to work and ability True. to to do things but a lot of people are an automatic yeah. and they don't know why, they don't know how, they're just programmed that way and they're running, 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 not knowing why they're doing it and what it's causing until there's big alarm bells. I mean, that's what happened to me now at the end of the year. I'm, sure. I'm very open about these things. I don't yeah. sit and pretend like that I'm still a high performer. Yeah. I still sometimes go into this mode of I need to achieve, I need to do, the end of yeah. year is coming, I haven't done it, exactly. I don't meet my KPIs on a personal <laughs> level, you know? <laughs> And I, I burnt out yeah. and then I sat down with myself and I'm like, okay, like I'm feeling the feels, let yeah. me go get tested. And then I realized, okay, I need to act as I preach. And I, yeah. so I applied the principles of the 10 pillars of life mastery on yeah. myself and I introspected on it. And now I have a very clear strategy and plan for the future. Like yeah. one of the things, for example, is um, screen time. That's one thing that came up that 
I am now, I've, I have a clear strategy in how to cut out the screen time. So um, I was talking to my wife about it yesterday and she's like, whoa, really? Like, <laughs> there you go yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, خلاص, يعني, to the point where, um, alhamdulillah, now I'm blessed that I'm in a relationship where my wife is, a, is an academic, she loves to read and stuff like that. So a concept of getting rid of TV is not something Boring. completely crazy, you know? Yeah. Um, so all these strategies that we can put into place, whether extreme or not, um, are valid. And we're both always about change and developing and expanding That's and stuff beautiful. like that. Yeah. So, um, so a lot of strategies came out of that, a lot. What's happening with my business, what's happening in my, in my career, what's happening uh, in my relationship, what's happening as a parent, what's happening, all of these things that finances because the 10 pillars of life mastery touches on everything yeah. right um yeah so clear path now into so, 2023 yeah i love it. so yeah the first word is success okay what does it mean to you oh, the definition of success has changed so much for me um i think success for me is um before it would be setting goals and reaching them and achieving them. And now it's the ability to set goals without being attached to the outcome is where I, I would measure my success. If I'm able to have as a high performer, because I'm not one of those people that's going to tell you, you know, live in a, in a woo world where you imagine things into life and whatever. I believe in all of that stuff. But I also believe that there has to be a plan and strategy for you. I'm, I'm a strategist. Yeah. I, 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 that's my background. So, I, I and I believe in it. You have to have a strategy and a plan. But the problem where people and most high performers kind of struggle with chronic stress is when they measure their um, worth and they attach it to goals. Right? Yeah, success for me right now has a very doesn't have a de defined doesn't have a defined definition except that, which is being able to counterbalance my high performance freak <laughs> with my, with my uh, peaceful, spiritual kind of guru, one is here, one is here, right? And find a middle ground where I am um, not measuring my self-worth with these goals that I've set with myself. I want to be able to free flow enough, you know, to be able to I think one of the biggest lessons I think that humanity were sent was Corona in that regard, mm -hmm. where everybody all of a sudden started realizing, okay, there is no security in jobs. There is no security in all these things that we thought yeah. were trained and were, you know, especially in our Arab world, yes. you know, if you don't have a nine to five job and you're not an engineer or a doctor, then you are nobody you know what i mean <laughs> there are two other jobs next to that but you know but you know at the end of the day now people are starting to realize okay you know first of all there's no security in a nine to five. Second of all i wasn't happy you know can i do something that makes me happy um, unfortunately i feel like we're falling back into old habits there is a general awakening and i think it's a step better and then god will send us something else to wake up even more right Yes. So I success for me I is that. It's gentle. Yeah, I'm a, I don't know. Like patterns in order of awakening don't get easier. Yeah. They get harder. You know, so first you're chronically stressed and you probably identify with this. Yeah. First you can't sleep and you're irritated and then eventually you have high blood pressure and then eventually it starts becoming more and more and more and more until that somehow something happens that knocks you out yeah. you know and all of that and to me it's, it was the same thing yeah. all of that is a message that's why i was telling you all of these things adrenal fatigue whatever that's uh, to me i just sit and listen now I'm like oh okay i'm feeling this way what is it trying to communicate with me what my what is my body trying to communicate with me and if you just give yourself that chance at moment of silence a day of silence god forbid right from from technology from everything i guarantee you a hundred percent that something will come up I agree. for sure 100%. yeah and the universe will kind of conspire to 
to allow that might be uncomfortable yeah but you know growth like here, here i am yeah here i am in dubai and like doing completely like less than a less than two years before my yani from my from my severe like moment of forced moment of like complete stop you know uh here i am sitting interview and doing something that my truly my heart desires extremely joyful doing it meeting people that are like you know at least like-minded in the sense where okay maybe i'm not insane yeah, you know yeah yeah and uh, yeah <laughs> well, yeah yeah I, un I understand you I understand yeah. you. look at the end of the day um I, i've been i've been in this world for approximately 15 years mm -hmm. there were times where i would talk about stuff like i remember the first time i pronounced the word gluten-free was about 15 years ago mm -hmm. and people used to look at me like i'm crazy yeah. literally that i have i have friends in my life that have been my friends for literally for over 40 years like my two best friends guys they're over each over 40 years of friendship, yeah. right? And we still see each other multiple times a week. Yeah. And their journey, it's crazy because yeah. 15 years ago, I started talking about these things because I was really struggling. They literally used to think I'm crazy. You're yeah. getting soft, the mubraya, like we say, you're not a man. Yes. What are you talking about? Are you eating me, you know, no <laughs> sugar, no, I don't know what. Absolutely. Now, they're, so so, they're worse than me. They're like super <laughs> yes. like, you know, when they see me eating gluten, they're like, you're eating gluten? I'm like, good, come on, <laughs> you know? So, I love that. so yeah, so yeah. it's, it's, it's I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, yeah. but what I can, what I can see now is that if these guys yes. are saying that, <laughs> yes, that yes, means yes. that there is a shift, there is something going on. 100%. That people are starting to be, and, and if you believe in spirituality and the cosmos and everything that's happening right now, Supposedly, this transition from 2022 to 2023 is going to be the most challenging uh, phases of humanity over the next few years because we are completely moving from unconsciousness to consciousness. So we're going to have to see everything. And moving from unconsciousness to consciousness, you've done this work, you understand that it is facing your worst fears, your traumas, your, your internal realities that are you know things that most people are running away from every day and that's why they're in chronic stress so so beautifully and simply said i love that last yeah, bit yeah. yeah so it's it's just the the universe is is is, is pushing us into that direction the yeah. corona was what one of it a lot of things are 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 kind of like putting us in that yeah. in that place uh it's funny how i'm uh, the second word is collective oh okay the collective Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very, very important word to me. Yeah. Um, I reflect on collective with the collective consciousness because one day I was in deep, deep meditation and deep thinking and I was thinking about, it was after the, bo the, the bomb that exploded in Beirut, mm. right? Yeah. And I was talking to a lot of people who were very negatively affected by it. Um, a few people I know that do kind of similar things that I do opened up to the public and said if anybody needs anything to, to, to talk about, I'm here. And I said the same thing. And I'm always very conscious of what I say in these situations because to most people, to the, let's say, 99% of people that are not um, on the same path I'm on, um, what I'm just going to say is going to seem, seem very crazy because mm -hmm. they're deep in victim mode mm -hmm. and they don't even want to accept the fact that they're being victims and they want to completely project that onto onto their government, onto their, you know, whoever they can project. It doesn't matter as long as it's someone else. Yes. Yeah. But if we, if we believe in the science of energy and if we believe in the, in the, in the power of consciousness, right? And we believe in the concept that in order for you to change the world, the only thing you can do <laughs> in the seat of empowerment is change yourself. Absolutely. And and why why is that is very important to understand in the in the in the context of the, the, the collective. Because let's say getting out of the woo world, let's rationalize it, mm -hmm. right? If me and you meet for the first time and I say something that pisses you off or hurts your feelings or whatever, mm -hmm. right? I am, what I did was I projected something from inside of me 
It's like me taking this black ball and giving it to you, yeah. right? You're gonna take that black ball and you're definitely gonna give it to somebody. Mm -hmm. If you're not empowered enough to think, you know, oh, this guy's acting out of his own whatever, you know, and I'm gonna let it go, and you do something to let it go. But most people don't, they carry it they and they transfer it. Uh, who am I gonna give it to? Or they can break it into three pieces. I'm gonna give a little bit to my wife, a little bit to my f kids, mm -hmm. and a little bit to my colleagues. And then these guys take it and give it to another three or four people. And these guys get it. So if you wanna rationalize what the collective, what collective consciousness is and how negative energy affects that, right? That's how you imagine it. It spreads. Your negative energy as a person spreads. And if you don't think about that every day, you're diminishing your power as a human being. Because our power as a human, we're phenomenally powered. The ability for us to change the world on an individual level, and it's been proven. Gandhi, uh, Mandela, uh, Teresa, all of these people, that, yeah, Jesus, yeah. Uh, Muhammad, all of these people yeah. change the world. We have the ability to change them, every single one of us. And these disasters that happen, like dis natural disasters and man-made disasters and, and wars and things like that, are a reflection of the collective. That's all they are. So the most powerful work you can do is work on yourself to release this unconsciousness and bring it into consciousness and bring that energy and deal with it with alchemy or whatever you want to do, whatever way you deal with it and release it, right? And the more every single person does that, can you imagine a world where people consistently worked on that every day, you know, on their joy, on their happiness, releasing chronic stress, releasing negative energy, the world is going to change for sure. Yeah. For sure. There isn't going to be place for negative. Um... It's going to be a, a transformed. Yeah. Like you're going to have that energy, that negative heavy energy into a lighter energy of joy, of love, of you Absolutely. call it, like on happiness, a on a peacefulness, level. on a collective level. Yeah. yeah. But first of all, like going back to what you first said, we have to understand what emotions are yes. because emotions are the energy in motion like yes. you feel it yes. this is how you feel the energy like this yes. is how you feel okay this is a safe space this is somewhere i can become more of myself this is someone this is how i'm releasing it. this is yeah. you know and and it's not easy nobody think. you know the the simple the, sim, the, the the simple understanding of emotions i think is one of the most empowering things you can teach a human being because like I don't, I don't, I never refer to anything as bad or good anymore. To me, everything is good. Yeah. All emotions are in the good spectrum. They just have a positive or a negative yeah. aspect to them, yeah. right? And all of them are happening for a reason, for you, yeah. to guide you in a different direction, to make you aware. And that's your intuition and your, and your higher self and all of these messages coming through because we're energetic beings. That's the only way we're able to get these messages. And Absolutely. most of the time, it's your subconscious or your unconscious mind telling you to be aware of your situation and to either go into it or go out of it or be aware, you know, or, or, or enter be it with careful. awareness. Like, yes, yeah. exactly. And, and if people are able to harness that compass, that positive and negative, lives magically transform just, just by that. Just by that. I agree. You, you make it sound so simple and uh, and uh, your third word is development. Development? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of go, you know, so stitching yeah. into it. Yeah, development for me is, is all about the self. Um, I believe too many people are trying to develop other people. Um, and I, you know, carrying that into, into what we just said, I think development is is everybody's um, right and everybody's mission yeah. should be should be development should be growth should be all of these words that come out of that kind of concept yeah. um, because that's our salvation as people and as a collective that's our, that's that's where we can be better parents be better colleagues be better entrepreneurs bosses leaders athletes as soon as we are able to, to, to develop ourselves, uh, mind, body, and soul, there's a trinity behind this. The more 
we will have a better quality of life in general and affect everybody else around us. Absolutely. Uh, final word, uh, the one that I love the most. What is love for you? I'll tell you a story about love. Okay. okay. Love, um, I was sitting with a class of people and I was saying, I was, uh, I wanted to do an experiment. I thought of it on on the moment, like it wasn't. Um, and I was like, um, and this applies not just to love, but love is the gateway to it. And I was like, uh, I'd like every single one of you to write their definition of love yeah. on a piece of paper. And there were about 30 or 40 people. Yeah. And everybody wrote their definition of love. And then I got five people to come up, whoever wanted to read their definition of love. Yeah. And not a single person was the same. So, love and like you're saying, definitions are very important to come to, to discuss when you're having any discussion. So, if me and you, let's say husband or wife or parents or best friends or even colleagues or whatever, it's very important for us to define these words before we speak about them. Because if you know the five languages of love and your love needs and your values and all of these things that people talk about that are contextual to love, yeah. Everybody has them different, depending on their condition. Mm -hmm. So for me, love is the best way to bring the unconscious into conscious. Because if, because what love is to me is learning to be with somebody and simultaneously releasing the conditions behind the emotions that are exchanged. So we all have these conditions that love needs to be a certain way. You need to do this for me. I need to do this for you. You need to behave a certain way. You need to respect me. You need, and all of that is a spectrum of what's right and what's wrong. And there is no right or wrong. There's just what people are conditioned like robots to be, right? And we have the ability to reprogram that. So for me, love is a journey of, um, of trying to resolve these conditions that revolve your relationship with a human being, with whoever it is, it could be even with an animal, it could be whatever it is. So in my marriage, for example, it's something that we consistently work on, which is when we come up on a, on a problem, small or big, we start trying to understand what are the conditions in the background that made me judge her or made me think she was being rude to me or made me react a certain way or bring up negative emotions. So it's all kind of connected to what we were talking about um, and I think love is a, is a, is a beautiful opportunity to, to, to understand these mirrors with people and see how you can release yourself of these, of these conditions. If a marriage or a relationship, because I'm also a master relationship coach by the way, so I yeah. do work with people in the relationships. If a marriage is seen through that lens, also magic happens because you're able to transcend so many of the things that are repetitive problems and fights and arguments that are all based on my own reality projected on you and your reality projected on me and <laughs> it becomes a, a volatile kind of space. It's, it's, it's being aware of that that kind of resolves that. Yeah. Uh, I am absolutely grateful for your for this meetup and even more grateful for you allowing us to have this because you know how you know like you can reach out to a million people and yeah. and, and, I, and that's okay but <laughs> yeah exactly that's then that, and that's okay you know yeah. because uh, when meetups are meant to happen they happen yeah. you know yeah. so i'm really really grateful yeah, to, uh, to have met you I and uh, uh, and i think there's like a lot of pearls of wisdom there thank you all around yes. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much.